Okay, this video is gonna be about number five from the 2018 Calc BC exam, and it is the polar question. So um, we are given a graph, and we are told what the two functions are. So one of them is r equals four, and one of them is um, r equals, so r equals four is a circle, so that one's easy to identify. And then the other one is r equals three plus two cosine of theta. We're also told that they intersect at uh, pi over three, and then again at uh, this point down here at five pi over three. And the first question is to find the area of R. So to find polar area, what I'm gonna do is uh, one half, and then it's gonna be the integral from, I'm gonna go all the way from pi over three to five pi over three. So pi over three to five pi over three. And then we need to figure out which curve is farther out and which one's closer in. So uh, I like to just draw a little radius. So you can see that the farther out curve is r equals four, and then the closer curve on the entire interval is uh, three plus two cosine theta. So uh, it's gonna be one half the integral from pi over three to five pi over three of uh, the bigger area. So it's gonna be uh, four squared, and then minus the smaller area, so I need to do uh, the quantity three plus two cosine of theta squared, and then uh, close that, and then d theta. And uh, it's just set up, so uh, there we go. Uh, you also could have done two times, the in two times one half the integral from zero to pi, um, and then you would get the exact same answer. So that's another option, you can use symmetry. It's a really common thing to do with polar. Don't forget to square the r's, that's probably the most common thing people forget. And then people forget the one half often as well. Uh, so in part B, we wanna find the slope of the line tangent at uh, two, okay, so it's tangent to r equals three plus two cosine theta and at theta equals pi over two. So to do that, we're gonna to need to find a lot of things. So I know that x is equal to r cosine theta, which means that x is equal to three plus two cosine theta times cosine theta. So I'm gonna find dx d theta. So dx d theta, this is a product rule. So it's gonna be uh, first derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then plus the second is cosine, derivative of the first, the derivative of three is zero, the derivative of two cosine is negative two sine of theta. And now I need to evaluate this at pi over two. So I know that the cosine of pi over two is zero, which is pretty nice. Um, it makes the whole second part drop out. And then the sine of pi over two is one. So this gives me uh, three because the cosine of pi over two is zero. And then uh, negative one because the sine of pi over two is one. And then uh, plus zero because the cosine is zero. So this overall is just negative three. And then I need to find uh, what y is equal to so I can find dy d theta. So I know that y is equal to r times sine of theta. So you need to know that x is r cosine, y is r sine. Um, so subbing in, I get this. This is another product rule problem. So dy d theta is gonna be the first, the derivative of sine is cosine, plus second is sine. The derivative of the first um, we got before was negative two sine of theta. And now we need to evaluate this at pi over two. And it's uh, the same idea, so cosine is gonna be zero, sine is gonna be one, which means we get uh, three, but then times zero. And then plus uh, sine we said was one, so this is overall gonna be just one times negative two, which is negative two. And so we're trying to find dy dx. So uh, dy dx at theta equals pi over two is just dy d theta, and then divided by dx d theta, both of which were evaluated at pi over two. And so we already found the values, and so we just substitute in, so we get negative two over negative three, or two thirds. And so to summarize, the slope at theta equals pi over two is two thirds. And we're on to part C, which is actually the last part of this question. So for part C, we are, it's kind of a related rates type of question. Uh, so it's moving along r equals three plus two cosine theta. Um, it moves in such a way that the distance from the origin is increasing at a rate of three units per second. So the distance from the origin 
um, is a function of time. So that's dr dt, um, and that's going to be three just units per second. And we're asked to find d theta dt um, when theta is equal to pi over three. Okay. So uh, you'll notice when you look at the function, there's no t in there. So we're going to take the derivative of everything with respect to t. So we get uh, dr dt is equal to the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of 2 cosine is going to be negative 2 sine of theta, but times d theta dt, because everything is a function of t. Um, so d theta dt. And now we just substitute in. So we know that uh, dr dt is 3. So that should be equal to negative 2 the sine of, we're plugging in pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. Uh, reviewing the unit circle is probably a really good idea. It comes up a lot. It came up a ton in 2018. Um, so you should probably expect that going forward. Um, and then d theta dt. And if we keep solving this, we get d theta dt is um, negative 3 divided by radical 3 or you could rationalize that and just get negative radical 3. And then the units for this, it's the rate of change of the angle. The angles are in radians and time is in seconds. So this is in radians per second. So that's the polar question. Pretty typical, find an area, um, tangent line. And then they always like to throw in these related rates questions because I think there's just really not enough to ask about polar. Um, so I hope you found this helpful and good luck.